Hello, it's Miss Darling in the studio. Welcome back, and if you're here for the first time, I hope you'll enjoy my content and subscribe and join our little community of junk journal crafters and artists and a wide variety, I guess. Anyway, I'm going to be talking about recycling junk mail envelopes once again, and I have to tell you, show you these. These, I just love, 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 love these. Of all the things I've created, these are three of the things that I love the most. And I thought, well, I want to use them, but I have to find something really special to go in them. And I've never found anything special enough to go in them, or I've forgotten that I, I still hadn't used these. So here they are after a year or two sitting around in my studio here, totally unused. And these were um, junk mail envelopes that I redecorated and have made them into charming envelopes that I could use for storing something. It just has to be <laughs> really special, I guess. Anyway, uh, here's one of them and then here's another one and opens up and you can see how fun and crazy they are and I just had a ball making them and loved how they turned out each one has its own personality and yet it's a set of three and gave me a chance to just go wild and you open up this one and uh, uh, you know there that is <laughs> might not be your taste but if it is uh, I think that I will probably scan the front and backs of all three of these and put them in a digi kit so if you like these as much as I do and you'd like to make your set yourself a set obviously they what what you print off is not going to be 3d like like these are but you can add further embellishments of your own to get that three-dimensional quality added to them. So that's that. But today I'm going to work on some more envelopes. You guessed it. But I'm not going to try to duplicate this, though I'm going to keep it out as inspiration. And so what I'm going to do is I found these three more jumbo size envelopes that, that I've saved out of mail. And of course for the video I had to block out any personal information and I had to use a dark sharpie. Well, in this particular time I'm going to cover mine with this great fabric from Tim Holtz. It's uh, uh, very French and I just love it. And I had so much of it I thought, well I need to use some of this up. And so I'm going to cover it with this, but I didn't want this black, you know, I was worried about the, the part that I've blocked out showing through the fabric and it does gluing you know some sheets of paper on top but I wanted something that would just lie completely flat and you know not have if you ran your hand over it I didn't want to feel a piece of paper glued on. I'll apply a little heat to it and see what happens <laughs> the uh, 
window envelope melted. <laughs> okay. Bye bye. All right. Well, I probably should have just maybe glued a piece of thin tissue paper. Uh, it might have knocked it back enough where it wouldn't show through and the tissue is thin enough that you wouldn't know that it was there. But Uh, I got this far I'm doing this so it is what it is that's what I tell Swoop when things don't go as planned or whatever and you're not necessarily happy it is what it is and you just go on all right now I slit this particular envelope open so I have a complete pattern to work with and let me show you how I did that. I just took a letter opener. If you don't have one, maybe a not too sharp, uh, you know, like a butter knife from your kitchen might, might do the job. I just, I start at the bottom there's usually a, a little bit of an opening there and then just very carefully work my way up trying to point the edge of the litter opener downward so that hopefully I don't get a tear okay and just now I suppose you could steam it open but I didn't want to go to the time and trouble to get out my steam iron and do it that way so here's the non-steam iron approach now this one's going a lot easier than that other one okay so just slide them you know slit them open and uh, then we go from here now, I want to just do a last double check over the, you know, lightest area of my fabric. And, uh, yeah, that, that does the trick. You can't see through. Okay, so I'm going to take my fabric, which I, I tore my fabric. I love torn frayed edges and I'm going to wind up with that torn edges everywhere if if I'm lucky and so it's my fabric is just slightly wider than um, than the envelope I guess it's depends on the place anyway it's it's very close I think maybe I'm going to I got it maybe you know when you tear sometimes you don't you know it's not the same on one end of the fabric as it was on the other end due to you know a previous cut so to make sure I don't exceed the width of my paper I'm going to um, just trim these edges off about a sixteenth of an inch on each side okay so um,
I'm going to now just tear a snippet or just a hair. Let me get move this up for you. Um, just a little bit larger than the envelope. doesn't want to tear. There we go. Okay. Right side down and envelope going this way. My back side makes it all right. Let's turn it around. Okay, so I'd rather this be on the front and the flap and then this be the back. So I'm going to now, I have to use something other than my fabric glue because it is slow as molasses and would take forever. I think what I'm going to do is just glue around the perimeter uh, to hold it in place, or maybe I should just pin it. Uh, I'm just about out of time with this particular clip, so I'm going to think about it, and I won't be able to show you my sewing because I'd have to move my camera, but um, I'll be back. Okay, I decided to pin the envelope to the fabric and I'm now going to go over to my sewing machine and I'm going to sew around the perimeter but I'm also going to maybe do a little meandering sewing uh, through the middle. And here's my second one and I'm going to now tear it as best I can, making sure that I leave probably a little more fabric all the way around than I did on the first one. I'm notorious for being real stingy <laughs> with my fabric and uh, you can wind up very easily doing something too short then. Okay, so let's get this up here. And so approximately there. I strategically placed the fabric so I would have a different you know, it would be very different from the other envelope, even though cut from the same piece of fabric. Okay, now do this side. I'll probably use some of these threads coming off. I like gluing them on my designs, especially when it's such a very casual type of pattern on it anyway. And, uh, you know, this is definitely not going to wind up looking like any kind of formal product. Or I 
I should say project. Okay, so here's one and then here's the other one and I'll be back after I get them sewed. Okay, just to bring you up to date, I had decided that since I'm covering the envelopes entirely with fabric that the focal points that I want to put on them I want them out of fabric too so I had to stop and print off some imagery on some muslin fabric and so here here are a bunch of potential images uh, didn't come out real good here because those two items right there were three-dimensional and so it was not able to lay down flat uh, against the printer and that's why they're fuzzy and kind of dark around it I have these numbers uh, I love numbers and don't know if I'll use any of them but I have them and then here's a sheet I like a lot in part because uh, it's colorful and I have on the envelope fabric themselves some places where there is red printing and here we see part of it on the front of this one and part of it on the rear and then there's this um, cross over here a little bit red there so I thought you know it just makes real perfect sense to accent with something in red or a red and brown combination and I'm going to cover the inside flap and I just love this fabric and I think that's just you know I want you know when it's when it's closed like that, it look it look this way. But when you open it up, I like the idea of seeing a completely different fabric on the inside. So I'm going to do that. And then on this one, here's the inside fabric I'm chosen for this. I don't want them to be exactly the same. So when this one is closed, it will look like this, and this is the back. There's some green uh, in here, sprinkled a little bit, so that's an option too. And um, so then when you open it up, you'll see this. And um, so that's what I'm doing as far as that goes. I've got this nice piece of red text. Uh, fabric that I got somewhere along the line. I think it was part of a Tim, Tim Holtz collection or fabric somewhere. And so I'll be ripping these up so they are in their individual state and then I can start deciding some placement. And here are some French signs that I had, and I had printed, originally I had printed uh, this one up, but this is just too big. And uh, so then I found a, another one and printed it up at half size. And uh, so, so I'll go ahead and rip this one. I don't need two of the same thing. So, you know, I probably use some of this, some red, maybe uh, some of this green on one of them, and maybe red on one and green on the other. And uh, so we'll see. Anyway, I just wanted to bring you up to date on what I'm doing. Now, I have talked about printing on fabric in a previous video, but let me just discuss that again. I have an HP printer and it 
is quite easy to do with an HP. I do not know about other brands of printers, but I'm sure others will print on fabric too. But what you need to do is get a piece of cardstock, you know, the size that you want that your printer will, will handle. And you don't want to use just a sheet of paper. You want something thicker. So if you don't have any cardstock, then glue two or three pieces of paper together so you have a little bit substance uh, to your substrate. And then you want to use a spray adhesive. And there's many different spray adhesives on the market. I'll try to put a link in the description box to the one I use. And uh, so just lightly spray it. I go outside, just lay it on, on the dirt and, you know, give it a nice spray. You want to have your fabric cut to fit the, the sheet that you're going to use because you can't just run fabric through a printer by itself. You have to put it on a sheet of sturdy paper and the spray adhesives, you want to make sure it's a removable spray adhesive and they're not real strong and so once it goes through the printer then you can just pull your fabric off and you're done. Now, on one of these fabrics, I didn't quite get the fabric cut so that it went from top to bottom perfectly. I was short, in other words. And so when my fabric was just slightly below the edge of the paper, the printer would not pull it through. And it wasn't until I trimmed off the paper and got the two more or less even that I could get it to go through my printer. So that's just a little tip I want to throw out there. And um, I found actually the easiest way is to take one of my old sheets that already had the adhesive on it and uh, I lay it down with the adhesive side up and then just take some uh, fabric which I have, you know, like I bought a yard or two of it. And so I just laid the fabric over it and, you know, spread it down so it was nice and even made sure I didn't have any, any uh, folds or anything. And then while it was lightly adhered to the paper, I just cut around uh, on two sides. You know, I, I matched it up. Uh, on two sides and then just had to cut around it with you know use a good pair of fabric scissors so you don't have any problems cutting and that was by far and away the easiest way to do it and um, obviously if you don't have any any stock paper cardstock that you've sprayed in the past then you have to start from scratch and actually spray a sheet but um, it worked out better for me to lay a big piece of fabric down on top of the adhesive paper and then cut around it than it did to pre-cut or pre-tear my fabric and just, you know, hope I got it big enough because obviously I, I didn't. And it caused me some problems. So, and, but anyway, that's all there is to it. Just pick out good imagery. Do not expect it to come out as dark and as strong as it would on paper. It's just not going to do that on fabric. And I'm using muslin, though you can use, you know, other types of fabrics. The only printing I've ever done has been on this muslin, and I like it because it's, it's uh, you know, got a little bit of texture to it, but not too much. It's fairly lightweight. Um, you don't want a heavyweight, but you also don't want something that's 
too light. What I do is, is I, if I have paper imagery, I, you know, cut it out and then I take and turn over a piece of artist tape so that it's uh, sticky on both sides and I just lightly adhere the what I want to reproduce onto a sheet of white cardstock and um, that's what I use to copy from and that's what I did with this I I tacked down each individual number with a, you know a rolled over piece of artist tape and um, you could use double-sided tape but you may find that in a double-sided tape it winds up being a little bit of a problem to get it off afterwards might be too tacky but I found that artist tape is easy to apply and even more importantly easy to take off and doesn't leave any residue so I just have a um, where is it I have a half inch roll of it that I keep on hand at all times and it is made for artists and I like it a lot so if you go and and put your imagery down on a sheet of cardstock first then it makes it real easy to print off you know get as much out of your out of your print pass as you can to fill it up without you know going beyond the borders and stuff so uh, I suppose that's clear as mud but maybe we're not going to get any more clear you can see here how I I had a little trouble I think this was the the one that I was having problems getting to go through the printer and when it finally took it it uh, chopped off uh, my images right along the top there all right I'm going to kind of take a look at at what I'm doing here and make some decisions and come back to you I'm going to go ahead and glue and I'll do some gluing and some sewing to my envelopes and get this all on um, the way I want it before I start adding any ephemera. I'll finish that up and then I'll come back. Okay, time to catch you up and here's what I've done. I sewed all the way around and in between following natural lines. I didn't want to just introduce new lines since there's so many to begin with. So I just kind of sewed along following uh, lines that were in the pattern of the fabric anyway. And so here is the first one and I sewed this fabric into the back and what you want to do before you enclose close up the sides you want to position and whether you sew it or you glue it you want to take care of that back fabric on the back of the flap first before you fold it over and anchor down your sides now in this particular one I had some problems with my sewing machine I don't know what's wrong with it I was too tired to try to figure it out and fix it so I just glued down the sides of this one whereas the other one I actually sewed down the sides anyway so this this is uh, the first one and I decided I wanted something more uh, stronger going across here to 
visually separate the flap from the bottom of the envelope. So I put a strip of fabric there that coordinates and then sewed this little wooden button there. And down here I added this fabric uh, number. I added this fabric and this because I, I had this red over here so I wanted to pull some of that over here. But I also have some green uh, here on the back and green up here in the top. So rather than do a red number, I opted for the green and these are uh, complementary colors, Christmas colors if you will. And then I added this little French uh, sign right here and I hand stamped this design onto a piece of muslin and tore that out and added that there so that I would have a sprinkling of red and green going all the way across for balance and of course it's up here. Now I sewed the button in the middle and that's just too symmetrical for me and I feel like this is a little bit too dominant so here's what I'm going to do I think to kind of tone that back and to kind of introduce a little bit more asymmetrical feeling is these are threads that I have collected off of making these. You've got the muslin natural fabric uh, uh, threads in the back and then I added some from the other fabrics that I'm using and I'm going to glue that down right about there so it kind of comes across almost like a tassel coming down there and what that does is it pushes that red textural piece into the background. You don't notice it so much and I think I I like the feeling of that. It's not so focused in the middle for an asymmetrical gal. <laughs> and everything is asymmetrical. I just did not want the eye uh, going so much into the middle. So this pulls the eye a little bit uh, to the left and, and I'm going to go with that. Now what I like about these is, you know, these envelopes are so big that when you open them up, <laughs> you can really open them up wide to put stuff in and take stuff out. And because it's covered entirely in fabric, it's going to be very sturdy for a long time. And uh, I, I really like that. Okay envelope number two. This is from the same basic background fabric but of course uh, positioned at a different place and so uh, you open this up and I had a, a different fabric back here which I really love and like I say I sewed this completely so I sewed the fabric on and then I sewed up and down the sides and that's how that's anchored and then unlike the first one, the first one I put a strip of fabric on top going all the way across and in this one I decided I wanted something a little more subtle yet I wanted to definitely see a difference between the flap and the bottom so, but this time I put the fabric uh, behind the flap instead of in front of it. So there's just a little bit of red that you see crossing over there. And um, I had a bare spot here. I still have a bit of a bare spot up there, but I think I'm maybe going to be okay with that. But I had to move my my number 62 down further 
so that when it's closed you can still see the number and um, I'm pretty happy with that and then on the back um, I had a bare spot here so I added this French signage there well that made the right side much stronger than the left side and so I have this red over here I thought well I need to bring some red over here uh, more than than what was there so I added this strip of fabric it's the same fabric that I used up here in front and then in order to kind of just pull everything together I added this hand stamp that I made on a piece of muslin. I'll show you how I did that. It's very simple. Very simple. Anyway, so I'm happy with my balance there. And so then I'm thinking closure wise, I'm probably going to on each of the envelopes, I'm going to put a snap here on the right and one on the left. I don't have any snaps in house. So I'll have to do that uh, off camera at a later time. But that's what's going to close them up but now I don't know if you've noticed that this side is a little bit lower hanging than this side and that's just kind of how it came out and uh, I'm okay with that but to help draw the attention away from that a little bit let me give you a little trick here it, when you want to kind of draw the attention away then you do something like over here and so I have this that I found in my stash I forgot I made this some while ago and I'm going to sew that on or glue it on right there and you see that's kind of fun and and um, you know instead of putting a button or something else there for the final decoration I'm going to go with that and this is really just pieces of uh, I was going to say it was uh, embroidery thread but it's not it's a real fine I think it's um, I don't know what it's used for I bought uh, some while ago I bought a whole bunch of threads and stuff in a basket on eBay and this was from that and I used it in something maybe to bind a journal or something uh, that gave me all these bits and pieces left over and so rather than throw them away I bound them up and made this little kind of fun tassel and so I'm going to put that there and I, th <laughs> I think that's just really really darling so um, there's one other thing I forgot to tell you about on the back of this one I had this kind of a, a muted teal that's that's in the the fabric it's part of the design of the overall fabric and so I kind of wanted to repeat the circular ness of that and add you know a little bit more of that teal and pull it over here well I had this nice round image that says bits and bobs on it and you know, on paper it was very very strong and I knew it would be too bright for this but when I printed it out on the fabric it always prints out much more muted and I think it's perfect there's just a little bit of that same colorization there that um, is now over here so I'm going to glue that there and that will finish off the back here for me and I might as well glue this down now too this might be a really bad idea in the sense of of pulling up and whatnot 
if it's being used but I'll deal with that later if it becomes a problem put a little glue in there now to kind of hold that down I can't go back and sew anything because I've already glued the sides shut anyway so I'm, I'm real happy with how these have come out I think they're very fun it just always challenges your creativity to see what you can come up with and it doesn't have to be perfect and can be a little wonky and I mean that's just kind of the nature of it I'm going to go ahead and glue this in place and we're going to come just off center So all I got to do now is put some snaps on or unless I come up with a different way of kind of holding those down and uh, you know so that uh, once something's put inside it'll be secure in there and um, now back to I talked about I was going to show you about stamping on fabric so here's some other stamps that I did not use I have you know tried different colors and so you just need a piece of muslin or some other fabric hopefully not uh, too porous and not too highly textured and um, I'm just using these small little mini stamps from Tin Holtz that I have and I've got these very fun little stamps here that have different um, designs on them and so that's what I was using so I just take that off and use the stamp pad itself and just get my stamp reasonably wet and then just position it over the fabric and press down really good maybe rock back and forth a little bit and there you have it So let's do a green. These are great little things. I mean, you can do it with any stamp at all. And uh, it's just really nice to have stuff like this on hand that you can pull out at a drop of the hat to put somewhere to just finish something off perfectly isn't that that's just gorgeous on the fabric uh, coming out very you know the color is very nice I don't think it's going to dry lighter and um, okay I'm gonna try this rust again you of course can do this on paper quite easily but I wanted you to see how wonderful it is and how easy it is to do on fabric and so there we have it and that's it for this video thanks for being with me if you found this content helpful and inspiration. I hope you'll give the video a like, give me a comment, uh, ask a question, whatever. And uh, thanks for being here. I'll see you next time, hopefully. 
And this is Miss Darling calling this a wrap. Bye-bye.